You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, welcome to another fantastic episode of Ask a Drone You. My name is uh, Pablo. And my name is Roberto, and this is episode 792. Thank you guys for hanging with us today. Hope you're having a great day. Going to get into a little bit of ag talk. Just you know what bit. I love talking about? Plants. Plant. <laughs> oh, I bet you do, Paul. I was talking about, you know, like vegetables Daisies. and fruits. Yep. Sunflowers. Roses. You know, the cool things. All that good stuff. Yeah, yeah for sure. Special thanks to our sponsors today. Uh, if check out Energen. You need a portable battery charger like I do. Check out Energen, myenergen.com forward slash shop. Use discount code DRONEUA40. You want to pick up one of those A40 chargers, which can charge four P4 Pro extended life batteries all at one time. Pretty cool. It's great if you're just out in the road, if you're out on a boat, you're out on a plane, and you need to charge your batteries, and you have no power. Energen is there for you. Check them out. All right, Rob, let's hear that question. Hi, guys. This is Mark Fink in New Paltz, New York. Great show as always, and I really appreciate the first 10 experience you bring. My question relates to the quality of photogrammetry, specifically for crop surveys, that you can get with a fixed-wing drone versus a multi-rotor. From what I've read, fixed-wing drones can fly longer because they benefit from the lift of the wings and therefore are more efficient. However, I've also read that because of the speed at which they fly, the image quality can suffer. Do you have any insight into this? I'm looking to scale up from 200 acre farms to 800 acre farms, and I'm barely able to manage 200 acres with my Inspire 1 Pro and the X5 camera. A multi-rotor with longer flight time would help, but then that extra flying time could be offset since I'm also increasing the acreage four times over. Thanks again. There you go. Thank you very much for the question, Mark. Appreciate it very much up there in New Paltz, New York. I've been to New Paltz, New York. Really? Interesting little town. I was there in the middle of the winter once. And uh, snow everywhere, not a lot going on outside. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. It was actually really, really cool. Kind of neat little main street. I, I liked New Paltz. It's a pretty cool place. Lots of farm and, and stuff out there. So you I can see why he's doing You and this guy hang out? Is that what's going on here? Uh, I would have. I mean, Mark <laughs> sounds like a good guy. So maybe if I'm ever there again, he'd uh, show me around. You Anyways. guys can hang out, rub each other's bald heads. Yeah. I don't know if he's bald or not. I'm just saying. All right. Only if he's lucky. <laughs> Only if he's lucky. <laughs> awesome. All right. So this is a really good question because a lot of people are moving to fixed wing drones in mapping. And speed definitely plays a role in your ability to map well. And not only does speed matter, but also other things like shutter speed and the way that your camera are set up can overcome the speed of the drone if you are forced to fly at higher rates of speed. But we've done some deep diving on this. We looked at what Pix4D recommends. And even as of yesterday, I watched one of Raptor Maps' new webinars, and I found it just really fascinating and uh, very interesting about how thermal mapping is different from uh, from regular mapping. And I mean, it's different in the way that depending on the job that you're doing, your flight path could differentiate depending on the job that you're doing, which I found very mm. interesting. One of the things that they mentioned was that in thermal flights, you should never fly faster than seven miles an hour in doing your mapping. And I thought that was really interesting. In PIX4D, looking it up, it says nothing more than 10 miles per hour, which I thought was really interesting as well. Mm. But then I was kind of looking at that. And I was like, I'm, I'm wondering if they meant... 10 meters per second, because oftentimes the Phantom is flying, I want to say around 12 miles an hour when it's using PIX 4D capture. I mean, it's going pretty fast. So can you slow that down though in the app? Oh or? yeah, totally. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it only allows you to go so fast. Now that being said, when you're flying a fixed wing, if you are flying at higher altitudes, obviously speed can, you know, kind of be overcome by the fact that your field of view is so wide. So that being said, speed is definitely important when it comes to mapping because if your images have too, many, too much blur, they won't be able to stitch together properly. It's really, really important that you have a clean, crispy, sharp image. Now again, if you have to fly at higher speeds at higher elevations, it is possible. And if you're using the right type of camera, you can set your shutter speed to be extremely fast. So basically so, the faster you want to fly, the more you're going to have to spin on camera. 
right? I mean, it's going to take a higher end Something, camera. Yes. Mm -hmm. But that being said, you know, if we were to make a fixed wing drone out of a DJI flight controller, which is possible, mm -hmm. um, you know, you can go into shutter priority and just set the shutter speed to make up for, you know, exactly what you're trying to to do. Cool. Again, you do not want to use an ND filter when doing mapping. You don't want to use an ND filter, especially uh, in this scenario as well, because the ND filter actually uh, creates motion blur in the camera by slowing down the shutter speed, and we do not want to do that. So do not use ND filters. I, th I think that's some, some good tips there. So as far as using a fixed wing, can it go slow enough to accomplish what you need to accomplish? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, So absolutely. that's doable. And you're going to get more efficient flight out of it, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like for an 800-acre farm, if you can find the right fixed wing, which of course you can, that's going to be the way to do it? Um, I don't know if I would do it with a fixed wing. 800 um, acres, really? 800 acres. So that's like two 18-hole golf courses. Um, yeah, with Pix4D's new function, as far as flying larger areas and whatnot and going from battery to battery to battery. <sighs> Meaning you can change batteries and keep the mission moving mm -hmm. forward. Without. Yeah, I'm not sure if I really would be spending all the money to go into fixed wing, to be honest. Hmm. So, so here it says, Julie from Pix4D, right here, speed should fluctuate between two and eight meters per second. Hmm. So... Below, below 100 meters, it is better to decrease the speed a bit because if the drone flies too fast for altitude, images can be blurry or have too many distortions. See? So six meters per second is about 13 miles per hour. She said eight. So look at eight meters per second. I'm gonna guess I just was going 18. in the middle since you said two to eight, but somewhat. Ah, I was right. 17.89 miles per hour. That's yeah, so that's actually faster than what uh, Raptor Maps was saying. Right. That is faster, yeah. Mm -hmm. By so, quite a bit. But also thermal is a little bit different. Hmm. So, yeah. So anyway, so the official answer is 17 miles an hour top speed. So, But again, you know, I kind of... According to PIX4D. According to PIX4D. Again, I just want to say some things can be overcome with field of view, aperture, and shutter speed. So just I think that's really important to discuss. So anyway, I hope that answers your question. If you have any more, please go to askadroneu.com. Upload those questions. The official answer from PIX4D is 8 meters per second. All right? Cool. Anyway, that is going to do it for us. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You. Hey.